I'm a Gleek. <laughs> a big gay Gleek. Um, when we first got this screener at uh, E! Online, um, someone was watching it and I heard it. And it was like my gaydar went off. And um, I started watching it in my office. And I don't know why, but the uh, Don't Stop Believing made me cry. And cry and cry. And I just kept playing it on loop. It's very cathartic. I don't know what it is. I don't know. Um, the worst part was that we had to wait so long for that second episode. Um, but through these past few months, I've gotten to know a lot of the cast. Um, I kind of stalk them. <laughs> um, I go to any panel discussion that they have. Um, I go to the set. Um, I was on a carpet, a red carpet once, and I was interviewing Leah Michelle, and I hadn't met her yet. And she goes, weren't you on set the other day? <laughs> it was a little nerve wracking. So enough about me. We're going to get to uh, the panel. So now I am going to introduce everyone. First up, executive producer Dante De Loretto. <laughs> Co-creator and co-executive producer Ian Brennan. Co-creator and executive producer, Brad Falchuk. <clears throat> and a Glee newbie, the special guest star, Jonathan Groff. Jessalyn Gilsig. <clears throat> Jenna Ushkowitz. <clears throat> Kevin McHale. Diana Agron. <laughs> Mark Salling. <laughs> Jama Mays. Chris Culper. Amber Riley. Corey Monteith. Jane Lynch. <laughs> Matthew Morrison. <laughs> and now co-creator and executive producer Ryan Murphy. Set. Yeah, let's do this. This is a lot of people on yeah. this panel. Yeah. I guess, you know, let, hey. Um, well, that was gay. 
Um, <laughs> really gay. Are you gay? <laughs> no, so not gay. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> I guess let's start off. How did Glee come about? I mean, this is like nothing, absolutely nothing television has seen before. Where did it come from? Um, well, I had uh, just signed a deal at Fox, um, and I had been, uh, I had created for FX a show called Nip Tuck. <laughs> and so that was nearing its completion, and they called me in, and they, it was the, what do you want to do next talk? And I think they thought I wanted to do something incredibly dark and sordid, and I said, I want to do a family musical. <laughs> <laughs> And they um, said, no, really, what do you want to do? <laughs> and uh, I, I just wanted to. It's something I grew up as a kid loving. My, my first movie that I saw when I was four years old was Funny Girl, oh. which is why <laughs> Don't Rain On My Parade is in the show. And, and anyway, so I just sort of said it, and they were like, we've been trying forever, and we can't figure it out, and good luck with that, and let's, well, really, what do you want to do? And then Ian Brennan had written a, uh, a feature script um, that was brought to myself and Brad Falchuk, my writing partner. And I, it was a very, very dark, independent sort of movie, but I loved the title, which to me sort of was about optimistic uh, malice. Um, so we met with Ian and we said, this could be a great um, TV show, would you like to do it? And he said yes, and then I went, I went in and I, I pitched it, and they still didn't get it, I think. Um, but when I sort of said, uh, the reason I think that musicals haven't worked on television is because audiences, I don't think, watching television by people just breaking out into song. If we could do for a one-hour comedy what American Idol does, sort of, and use those songs to inform the story, I think it could work. And they still said, okay, we'll try it. So we wrote the script, and they picked it up, and we shot the pilot, and they picked it up, and um, here we are. But that's where it really, it really was sort of born out of my childhood, the things that I loved and, and what I wanted to do. And why um, no original songs? Why all covers? I don't know. It was just that it was what was interesting to me about it. I mean, I love pop music so much. I love all kinds of music. And that was always the rule. That was always going to be the device that told the story. And I wanted to sort of do a show where, you know, it was, it was for everybody. And in an episode, you could do a Broadway song and an R&B song. And I think physically, doing this song, this show, you know, we barely make it through. The production schedule is so difficult. So I don't, I don't think you could do a musical that's all original music unless you had a year off and, and then shot it, which you can't do. Um, but we are going to do an episode in the second season that does have original music. We are going to do that. We are. Yeah, tell me about the cast. Tell me about some of the auditions I've heard about. I know Corey um, didn't submit music, didn't submit himself singing, right, Corey? Instead of singing, I, uh, I taped myself playing the drums on Tupperware and, uh, <laughs> to show my musicality, because I didn't consider myself like a, a, a singer. You know? So I was like, I'm going to show where I come from. Yeah. And how that's, did... what, that's what got him the part, actually. It did. I mean, it was just it was an original submission, and it was different, and and that was always, I think, the idea of the casting, because um, when we went out, there were a lot of big stars who wanted to do it, and I said, you know, what? and we all felt that we wanted to do something to discover people, and we we really went all over the country for like four months. We spent a lot of time in New York, Brad and Dante and Ian and I, um, and we found a large number of the cast in New York. Um, everybody who auditioned had to sing, dance, and act for the most part, which was quite fun. Uh, um, and they were just all so moving. And like, as soon as they walked through the door, as soon as Matt Morrison walked through the door in New York, I'm like, okay, well, that's the guy. He played a ukulele. And what did you do? You did, um, what was your audition? Me? Yeah. Somewhere over the rainbow. Yeah, on ukulele. ukulele. <laughs> <clears throat> and then, you know, uh, it was written for Jane Lynch. Um, <laughs> I didn't have to audition. She didn't have to. <laughs> um, Matthew. Uh, <laughs> I actually know people who auditioned for your part because they were trying to scare you into getting the part, into actually oh, doing it. No, I didn't know about that. Oh, so I, I have work. some friends that have like 
They're like, I knew of a couple of people. We were afraid you would say no, Jane. We had to have a backup. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Matthew, uh, what's harder to do, Broadway every day, every night, or a show like this every week learning something completely new? You really cannot compare them. I mean, there's, there's, uh, they're two different beasts. Um, the, uh, the Broadway is, is, is hard just because you're doing it live eight times a week, so you really have to be on your game. Um, but this is, I mean, we, we work like 14 to 16 hour days. Not me. No. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's two different animals. Um, I, I can't say one is harder than the other, but definitely the hours on this is ridiculous, especially this kind of show. It's insane. And who does pick all the music? <laughs> uh, uh, we all contribute. I mean, there's many, many a time where I'll hang out with the kids and say, what have you always dreamed of doing. We just did that this week. And I said to Chris, I'm like, what song have you always wanted to do? And he immediately said, Rose's turn. Uh, <laughs> so now Chris is doing Rose's turn. Uh, um, I, I guess for the most part, I mean, that's my favorite part of the job. It's something that I work really hard on and um, sweat a lot. And, and, I, and people ask me how, what my, how I do it and what my taste is, and I don't really know. I mean, since I was growing up, I liked Barbara Streisand and, and, Barbara Streisand and the Rolling Stones with equal measure. So it's just a weird um, mix of the show that very sort of early on we sort of clicked into. You know, like I like to say, there's a, there's a song in every episode for everybody. If you look at Hello, it had a ballad, it had a rock number, it had kind of a, a great, it had a Beatles song, it had a great cross section. It's just, it's, it's songs I think that are just personal to me. How much easier has it gotten to get clearance for these songs? I imagine at the beginning they didn't know what you were, and now everyone's probably clamoring to be part of it. The, the best thing that ever happened is when we did the pilot, and there's, you know, like I said, there's not been a musical on TV that's worked for so long, and um, there were a lot of songs in that pilot, and I, we really wanted to do Don't Stop Believin', and um, Steve Perry got behind the script and sort of realized that the show was, you know, really about arts education, and he said yes, and that was the first big yes, and after that, everybody has said yes. There's a couple exceptions. Some people are, are too expensive, and on the show, you know, we have a lot of music, and we sort of have a favored nations policy where we only pay a certain amount, and that's it, and you want to do the show or you don't. Um, so who's not agreeing to it? <laughs> uh, cold play. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's not, that they object, they, it's not that they don't want their song on, they don't want their song to be covered by another artist yet. I mean, Coldplay was one, Brian Adams was another that I thought was very strange. Very strange. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> who wouldn't want their song to be covered on Glee? And that was Corey's big dream. How many people Brian? are clamoring to really cover crazy. Brian Adams' song? Well, <laughs> Well, now it's different because the music has been such a success, and when we do a, a song on the show, the original always recharts. So um, now, it, in the past six months, it's totally different now. People call you up and say, please, can you put my music on the show? <laughs> <laughs> that never used to happen. Well, I was very excited uh, that... Um, Mary actually was... Oh, you actually ahead. came to the set the other day. You just yesterday. stopped by yesterday. Was it yesterday? Thursday? And, and just thanked us. He was there to hang out, but he's like, thank you, because the fact is on, on the English and the Irish charts, I think his Don't Stop is climbing up. Amazing. And that's a 20-year-old song, so. Mm -hmm. I, think I love that uh, Mark slash Puck um, is bringing back Neil Diamond. Mm. <laughs> I, I didn't know he went away. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like performing a Neil, you know, being the gay Jew that I am? You know, Neil Diamond is a bar mitzvah song for me. Uh, and he's my idol. He's one of my idols, I swear. I'm not blowing smoke up your butts. Um, did you ever think you'd be on a television show with a guitar singing Neil Diamond? Um, no, I hadn't. <laughs> um, that particular number was really special to me because uh, I used to uh, literally Every Christmas, that's my mom's favorite artist. So I'd buy her a cassette tape. Yes, I'm that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'd give it to her, and uh, and then one time we were out, when I was in, I was in back home in, in Dallas, and we had my grandma over to my house, and we sh we wanted to, she's kind of uh, got dementia, but uh, we we showed her when, we showed her that episode, and she just was tapping her toe to that. <laughs> <laughs> 
it was, it was, it was, it's great to enjoy things like that when you see like, the people you love enjoy it more than just yourself. And then Neil Diamond tweeting about it. Okay. I mean, I didn't know he tweeted until he tweeted really? about you. <laughs> and I retweeted it again. You did? All right. I did retweet it. Um, Chris, let's talk about uh, your audition. Okay. Um, this is, you, you, you're like overnight. You are one big overnight sensation. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, seem, seems like a, like a four-year overnight sensation because this is like the first person that would let me work. <laughs> <laughs> but oh, audition. Um, well, I originally was auditioning for the role of Artie, and um, I walked in, and the first thing that Ryan said to me, I'll never forget, was, why do I have a feeling you've been in The Sound of Music? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 Best impression. <laughs> and he was. <laughs> I, and I said, well, I was Kurt in The Sound of Music um, back in the day. And, um, and then the next thing I know, they got the part of, they wrote the, the part of Kurt Hummel for me. And what's it been like going home now? Interesting. Um, a lot of people that weren't so nice to you claim to have been your best friend. <laughs> which I find fascinating because I don't forget easily. <laughs> <laughs> um, one thing I... This morning, I tweeted um, that I was doing this. And everyone wants to know about Puck and Rachel. Will we be seeing more Puck and Rachel? Um, Puckleberry, we call them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting, because you know when you do a show like this, you know when I went in and I pitched the show, I pitched out the first, I think, three or four years. You know, you have to do that. Um, and I always was really sort of interested in the Rachel um, Finn relationship, and then which will always be there. But you know, when you do an episode like we just did a special, we did that episode just so that sort of Mark and Leah could sort of play around together, and people really did love it. And of course, we didn't know that until because we had shot the first thirteen we shot in a vacuum. They didn't air until you know we were all done. So, you know, yes, they will. They will. Um, get back together, but the great thing that we found about the Puck character that we love is even though he's a great bad boy, we kind of want to keep him bad. So he actually has an affair with almost every lady on this panel. <laughs> I'm coming for you, Jane. Except not Jane yet. But not <laughs> <laughs> if, if she could get the principal, she'll get you. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, that's the, and also that's just the fun of when you shoot a show. You see who has chemistry, who you know, and, and, and the and the sort of the, the idea of two Jewish kids in high school dating each other clearly did touch a nerve. So um, we do bring them back and give them another go. Yes, we do. Uh, Kevin. Yes. Um, does it ever get frustrating? Do you want to sometimes just get up and dance? <laughs> I do when the camera turns off. I'm always dancing. Um, whether it's inappropriate or not. This is, I mean, uh, but I end up knowing all the dances because in rehearsal I just do them. And I can kind of, if you watch closely, I'm probably cheating in the wheelchair. Because Zach the choreographer is like, just figure out what you can do that looks like them. So I'm just over there like, okay. <laughs> no, I'm good. You know, I, I love. I mean, I can dance outside of it, but I love playing Artie as he is. I like the wheelchair. And then how did you come up with the whole the wheelchair sequence that you <clears> did, <throat> which was amazing? Well, um, the show to, to, to Ian and Brad and Dante and I was always very specific. It was about <coughs> the dog. It was about inclusion. It was about the handicapped kid, the gay kid, the pregnant girl, uh, uh, the minority students having a voice. Um, and that was sort of in the middle of this, the season and we were sort of burnt out because you know, we, we, none of us had done a musical before and we weren't pacing ourselves. And I think that I just had the idea that I wanted to see Proud Mary in a wheelchair. <laughs> um, and that, that's, I believe, what happened. And then we met and we were like, okay, if you know that, how do you get, how do you move backwards from that? But it started with that. And I think of all the numbers we've done, that's one of the ones I'm the most proud of. And I think it's the one that killed the 
kids the most, I think. <laughs> the shooting of that was incredibly difficult. There were a lot of accidents and spills, and at the end of it, people were like, Kevin, we didn't know it was so hard. And, um, but it was just, it was a beautiful number. It was a beautiful episode. It's my favorite episode we've done thus far, I think, Wheels. Um, but it started, with, it started with just a visual of the kids loving Artie and supporting him, and they all did such a great job in it, I think. We got to talk about Madonna. <laughs> Madonna. How did it all come about? Did she call you and say, take my songs? Madonna <laughs> does not call me. <laughs> 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 uh, you call Madonna, uh, which is what happened. Um, uh, I have worked with Madonna before. I admire her greatly. I'm friends with her a little bit socially. Um, and, and I wanted to do, uh, we've never done it before, but I wanted to do a tribute episode. And when we thought about that, we're like, well, who deserves a tribute episode? And it was her to me. Um, I think that she's, you know, I, when she first hit, I was 17 years old, and she, in many ways, has been the soundtrack for my life. Um, so I called her up and I, and I wrote her a letter and I talked and I wrote her and said, you know, we've never done this, but um, we want to honor you. We want to talk about your cultural contribution. And would you let us, you know, have your catalog? And she and Guy O'Siri, her manager, I think realizing that the show reaches so many young people and is like I keep saying about arts education, she said yes. And she she never sort of um, had any questions. We got everything that we wanted. You know, she cooperated in every way possible in that episode. I think we do, um, we do 10 Madonna numbers. Um, we just got done this week filming Jane Lynch doing Vogue, which was quite spectacular. Do you actually Vogue, and if you do, show us. Oh, I can't. I, 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 she can't I give her secrets away. <laughs> I uh, started rehearsing this dance-wise in December, because it takes me 10 rehearsals more than the, the normal person um, to get something. And um, it, it was an amazing day. We did it in almost a day. We, we had to pick up two shots this week. But um, it was amazing. We shot it in black and white. We basically we had the video in front of us, and we would pause. And we would you know, see where her hands were, and then we'd go shoot it. And it was, it was amazing. Everybody worked so hard, all the dancers, the hair people, the makeup people, the wardrobe. The wardrobe was amazing. I mean, I wore everything that she wears. I don't know if you saw that video. It, you should go home and check it out. It was uh, awesome. And uh, uh, Amber uh, and uh, uh, Chris were in it as well. They, they're doing, the, the conceit is, is that they're doing a makeover for me. I got, I'm, he makes fun of my hair. And so I, and I realize that I just wear track suits and blah, 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 and they, they give me a makeover and it leads to this video. And it's, is that too much? No, it's okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> James, no, but it, stop. It was, a, it was like, you know, it was, a, it, was a, it was, we kept calling it our spectacular spectacular. I mean, everybody worked so hard. We, we, the, the network and the studio were so supportive. They gave us so much money and extra time, and the kids worked so hard. And you know, I directed it, and I used to say, "Do it for Madonna." <laughs> and we and we did. So it's our second episode back after this. It's the one right after this. Diana, have you practiced giving birth yet? <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Can you imagine how creepy that would be? I'm at home. <laughs> I mean, I do have a puppy now, so that's a baby. That's creepy. That's a baby. <laughs> but um, no, but it, what has been horrifying is um, people have been telling me these stories about what happens, and I now really question whether I want to have children. <laughs> I've heard every horror story that is known to man about childbirth, <laughs> and I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Jonathan, how did, uh, how did they embrace you? you? You were the newcomer. You're the newbie. I do, I actually, I, forgive me, I do have to point out Leah and Michelle not being here. Totally forgot about that. Unfortunately, she couldn't be here tonight. Um, but the, she does send her love, and thank you for all the support. 
Again, I apologize for that. And you reminded me, because obviously, you're buddies. We're buddies, we're <laughs> totally buddies. Um, I guess you don't know really what to expect when you come on to a show, especially a show that's been as successful and such a phenomenon as this one. You don't know what you're gonna deal with as far as like onset drama and ego and attitude. But the thing about it was everyone on this show is so hardworking and genuine and passionate and has their feet so firmly connected to the ground that it was so inspiring to come into this company and feel totally embraced and know that like this huge, in, in the middle of this huge perfect storm of this phenomenon of the show is a group of people that are just like so humble and down to earth. Todd, we have oh, a full Thank you. <laughs> He obviously hasn't worked too much with us. No. <laughs> Keep dreaming, kiddo. Yep. <laughs> um, where's Puck's mohawk? Um, the, the, the Twitter world. All, all, all we will say is that Puck is in an episode trying out a new look. So do you like this or... Mo yeah? <laughs> Because Mark has been begging us since the day we shot that pilot, I think, to let him, you know, he auditioned with that mohawk, which was his mistake. <laughs> and uh, we loved it and we kept it in. But he might, it might come back. We might, you know, we might, we're mixing it up there. Um, Kurt's going to be getting a boyfriend. Yes. <laughs> what kind of guy is Kurt looking for? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to know too. Well, it's a very sweet it's a very sweet thing about that character because that character and his father that that Yes. And you know, Brad Falchuk just writes the hell out of those scenes and um, it's based on my father and myself. And I was a very odd child and that I was sort of out of the closet at 14 and proud and popular and it was and I grew up in Indiana. So it was not everyone's experience. But you know, when I was growing up, and this is a real thing for me, when I was growing up, I mean, I had Paul Lind and Charles Nelson Riley. Um, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> and, Paul, Paul Lind was the center square, right? Yes, he was. And, and those, were the, those were the gay people that my parents knew. Those were the only gay people that my parents knew. And you know, with the Kurt, character, I think there's such an opportunity and I think Chris and that character have become so iconic because he's proud and he's popular and he struggles but he has such dignity and I've never really seen that on network television particularly. I'm not interested in seeing that kid be gay bashed. I'm not interested in seeing him being picked on. I'm interested in him winning and him being popular and him being a survivor and him being a role model to so many gay kids who watch that show who can see that character and say, I can be that. Um, and, so, and, I, and I didn't have that, so that's very important to me. I mean, you know, he certainly struggles, but yeah, he's gonna have a boyfriend who's gonna be very different, but I think equally as fabulous and, and equally as, yeah, and I want them to become the power couple of the school and they will be. <laughs> That's what I want. All I ask is that I'm the better looking of the two. <laughs> <laughs> um, and speaking about gays that aren't on the show yet, um, Rachel's fathers, will we ever see them? Um, I don't know, we, Brad and Ian and I talk about that all the time. Not this season, um, uh, not this season, you know. Um, and we've never met them. I think that's a great surprise. I think you want to hold that a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, he's on the show, but he's not Rachel's um, dad. He's at, he, we're filming it right now with Joss Whedon, who's so incredibly talented. Tell, t talk about him. Talk about Neil? Talk about Neil. Um, well, unfortunately, his first day of work was last Monday, right after the Oscars that he sang on, so he was, like, so tired. <laughs> um, but uh, he plays uh, a high school rival of mine. He was two years older than me, and he uh, got all the girls, got all the solos, and I hated him. 
<laughs> and now he is a member of the school board, and he's going to try to bring Glee Club down. Like that hasn't happened a million times, huh? <laughs> um, so again, I have to wave my flag like I am the captain of the ship, and I uh, will fight whoever comes near me. Um, but it, it, we sing uh, two duets together. Uh, I can't say what it is. One is an Aerosmith song. And, uh, and the other is a Billy Joel song. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Um, Jema, that, okay. <laughs> I watched the episode at home, and when he breaks up with you, ah, oh, man. Where did, where did you go? I mean, you just, it was amazing. Maybe I broke up with him. <laughs> Yeah, I heard, I heard girl power. <laughs> um, no, you know, I, I do think there was a little bit of, of, of her doing it as well. It wasn't, it wasn't him dumping her, I don't think, mm -hmm. if that's what you were saying. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think she's being smart. She's a smart girl. And um, I don't know, I, I think that was really well written. And I was really thankful for the way that was written so that she wasn't doting on him the whole time. She was actually being smart and courageous in that, too. Have you spoken to people with OCD and everything else and <laughs> germ-phobic and... I have. P people come up to me that have issues and start telling me about their issues. <laughs> <laughs> they just don't shake your hand. They, they don't <laughs> shake my hand, no. <laughs> no, and, and people will ask to take pictures with me and say, oh, can you pretend like you don't want to touch me in this picture? <laughs> <laughs> Touch them, you know, so it's fine. That is, that's pretty brilliant. Yeah. That, that's really brilliant. Um, Jessalyn, you get to be really evil. That was very like Joan Crawford, Betty Davis, <laughs> and she just like appears. And you yeah. are evil. <laughs> How much do you like being evil? <laughs> um, as Jamie says, it's very subjective. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, I have Ryan to thank for launching my career of evil. And um, I, I'll make a meal out of any evil moment. I, I absolutely adore it. It's <laughs> as fun as it looks. Yeah. But I, I mean, that's the great, the fun thing about Jane and, and Jessalyn, you know, those parts could in lesser hands be completely gorgons, but what we really try and do in the writing particularly <laughs> is, you know, if it's, with Jessalyn's character, we have some great stuff coming up where, you know, and we've done it with Jane to great effect, where you really see damage that makes someone hard and you see a vulnerability and I think they're both so talented and they do such a great job with it and it's hard. Um, to be on a show that is so optimistic and be the dark force um, and not, for the most part, get to join in the song and dance. But um, I, the show would not be what it is without it, I think. But, I mean, that's always, to, be, to me, been the great fun of the show is it's that and then it has the snark, it has the dark, you know, so it's, you know, it's for kids, it's for their parents. I think it sort of links everything together. Let's talk about someone we haven't spoken about yet, Lady Gaga. <laughs> Who wants to do her really badly? Who wants, I mean, cover her really badly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who's fighting for Lady Gaga? Who's doing poker face? Bad speak romance. Speak up, kids. Speak up. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> I want you. <laughs> um, will you be doing Lady Gaga? Uh, we're going to do. Um, we are. We're doing a, an episode about the power of theatricality. Um, it's not a full-on, you know, tribute like to Madonna. It's in a different way. But yes, I mean, sh we're huge fans of hers. So I think she's so, you know, she's arguably the most important pop artist right now. It makes sense for us to do her. And we reached out to her, and she said, yes, I'd love it. I love the show. Um, so we are. We're doing that this season. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Amber. What's your message to Simon Cowell? <laughs> <laughs> Tell this story. Tell this story. <laughs> nanny, <laughs> nanny, boo-boo. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
know, you know what? I'm so glad. I, I didn't meet Simon Cow. Make that clear. I didn't meet any of the producers. But I'm, I'm really glad that they told me no. It was the best <laughs> no that I've ever gotten in all of my life because it made me work harder. It was, you know, American Idol at the time was a new way to get into the music industry because the music industry is so small. And it was, it was a, a brand new way and to be on TV. And now I'm working for Fox and I get paid to sing and I get to work with these wonderful people <laughs> that are on stage. So. Going back, going back to the wheel, to wheels for a second. You said like people getting hurt. What's like the most serious work-related injury? I mean, are people like flying across the stage, like boom, you know, things like that, or? Um, yeah, well, like when we did the pilot, there were a lot of. There was, a, I mean, it was a very intense pilot. There was a lot of dancing. There was a lot of, you know, heaving into trash cans, because um, <laughs> you know, for the most part, I think it was different and new for a lot of the kids. The thing that I'm so proud of is where they started, you know, a year ago and where you see them now in um, dance rehearsal. They're all singers. They're all dancers now. And it was like boot camp for a long time with Dante and Zach and Adam Anders, our music producer. Um, I don't know what, like, there was, there was a, a lot of people fell, fell over, tipped over in wheels. Amber, <laughs> Amber took a big... Yeah, so we were shooting uh, that uh, dance number you saw on wheels, uh -huh. and uh, here I'm rolling away, rolling away, and all of a sudden I hear this, wham, smash, smash, crash, bang, <laughs> and I turn around, and it's her, and she's lying flat on her back, <laughs> and the wheelchair has fallen off the edge of the thing, and she's laughing hysterically. I was laughing so hard. I've never, it was so hard that I just had to laugh. I felt like a cartoon character. I really did. I felt so hard right over the edge. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that I knew what I was doing. I, I commend you, Kevin. I commend mm -hmm. you. No, you know, I have to say, the first time I felt was like the other day. I, we, were, we were in rehearsal. Like, like, I was just sitting there. We were just talking. And somebody had taken the safeties off the yeah, back right. of my wheelchair that I usually do the wheelie on. <laughs> they did this on purpose. Well, no, somebody was using it, and they're apparently better than me at wheelchairs, so they don't need the safety. <laughs> Good for them. <laughs> but I was going back, and halfway back, I'm like, oh, right, there's no safeties on this. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, here I go. And it was, just, it was so awkward because it was like slow motion. Everyone's like, oh my God. <laughs> I actually hurt my knee a little bit. <laughs> um, what? minority, disenfranchised group is next for you? I mean, you've had everyone on, like you said. And we've only done 13. Yeah. Um, I don't know, we don't think that way. We don't think about, we don't target groups, we don't target people. We, we come up with the story serving these guys and then we come up with the characters second. So, um, um, we, I don't know, I don't think that way. Uh, we don't write it that way. It, it's not specific. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's more organic than that. Where did the characters with Down syndrome come from? I mean, that was just unbelievable. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember. I mean, you know, Ian Brennan, for the most part, writes the Fantastic Sue stuff on the show. Um, and we had a, a meeting, and we just kept thinking, like, what made Sue so damn terrible? <laughs> like, there's something that happened with that girl. Um, Wasn't she waterboarded and, or something like that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and then in, I think we came up with the idea of her having a, a handicapable sister and, and having to raise that sister and the taunts and the torment and the popular people going after you. And, and I think when Jane did that scene, I think, you know, I think you saw that character in a whole new light and then you got to do five more episodes of terrible actions because you knew there's a pain beneath that. And that's the, the joy of the show. Now we're gonna open it up to the audience. Um, oh, 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 hold on. Wow. <laughs> Just one thing we do ask, um, obviously you see a very big panel here. If you ask a question, don't ask everybody, what's on your iPod? You know, just try to um, sort of towards someone or a couple of people. And there you go. Hi, this question's for Chris. Um, there's a small group of dedicated fans who were wondering if you could take Candace McMillan to the prom. <laughs> 
Uh, I was just at mine, actually. Um, but um, I I'm so busy. Um, I, 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 here, here's my deal with prom. I went four years in a row in high school, and I'm, I'm, I'm a little prommed out. So, so um, I think I think I'll gladly do a prom episode, but I think that uh, no, thank you. <laughs> um, in the vest, right there. Um, this is for Ryan Murphy. Um, I hear you're looking for a male Mercedes. <clears throat> <laughs> Not sad. All right. <laughs> Actually, how often um, do people come up to you and just break out into song? Pretty much every day. <laughs> but you know, the thing about the show that's so great is, is um, in the spirit of how we cast the show, where it was open to anybody and everybody, you know, with a song in their heart coming the door, um, we are um, posting a website in the next couple weeks where people can download auditions um, singing a song that we've done on the show. And from those auditions, we will pull three or four cast members for next year. Hi. Thank you all for giving us something to look forward to every week. Um, Jayma kind of touched on this a little bit, but knowing how fans can be, how crazy over the top, I was just wondering, aside from the, oh my God, Artie, you can walk, and, um, <laughs> any stalking that our host might have done, what's the most unusual fan interaction any of you guys have had? We've seen a lot of tattoos. <laughs> really? We've seen a lot of glee, girls got glee tattooed in their lip, someone what? tattooed. Uh, Kurt Lyon on their a curt line on their shoulder. Oh my God. What? Oh, those reactions are or good. Or power tea. <laughs> wow. Do they, do they ask you to sign body parts? Foreheads. Foreheads. A Babies. Lot. Foreheads? Foreheads, yeah. The Babies. Glee, the loser. Babies. Babies. And then do they tattoo it? <laughs> the forehead was like, somebody asked Mark or somebody to tattoo the forehead, and Amber, it wasn't even Amber, she's like, no, we're not going to do that. I was like, no, 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 no. we don't want to get sued. You're 13. We signed, we signed, a, we signed a baby in Philadelphia. Um, the, a, a very nice woman, she brought her, her young infant, and she'd sewn that Glee Tour shirt, shirt actually right there on. that you're wearing. Yep, that one. And okay. into a onesie for her child. And, <laughs> and was like, will you sign my baby? <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you say, no? I, mean, <laughs> I bet that baby's worth a lot of money now. <laughs> <laughs> it's on, the Hopefully baby is on eBay. <laughs> the baby's on eBay now. <laughs> the baby will. Uh, <laughs> Hi, I was just curious, you had mentioned about um, picturing a song and then writing from that. Mm -hmm. How much of that happens? Because some of the songs are so perfectly appropriate. Are you picking a song and then backing the story in? Um, sometimes, not always. I mean, there's a couple songs that I've definitely done that on in the show. I mean, we did it for Rose's Turn with Chris. We did it for um, Leah Michelle when she, she did Don't Rain on My Parade. Um, I, I did it for Jane with Vogue. Um, uh, just things that I'm like, oh, I'd love to see them sing that, and then you write it down, and then you put it away. Um, but usually not. I mean, I would say 95% of the time we come up with what is the theme of the episode, what is the story, what are these characters doing, and then what song will inform that. And after we have that, we go away and we come up with the songs. That's usually how it works. I, I think one of the most remarkable things about this show is, is that the three gentlemen that you see here have written every single episode. You know, so, so much the, the demanding schedule of television, you usually have uh, a, a fleet of writers uh, in a room somewhere working on scripts, and these three gentlemen are writing every single one, and each one of the scripts is thematically about something, and the music is always uh, informing that theme, and it's, it's, I've never seen it. I don't know where else it happens, particularly in the schedule that we have. How many songs? <laughs> How many songs do you record that don't make it onto the show? Um, it depends. I mean, sometimes, you know, um, there was a number that we shot for this episode. You know, this, what you saw tonight was a director's cut. That's not locked. It's not shipped. It's just, it's, we just literally finished putting it together. Um, and it will be different from what airs. It's some, there's a number in that that, you know, we cut. Um, but not many. I think Amber and Leah have probably... 
um, done the most things that we sort of try out and I'm like, does this work or does it not work? And then, you know, you store it away or else you re release it. Most everything we have is released. But I would say, uh, I would say probably we've done like six of those and as of the other day, we had shot 90 songs, I think. Right there. Yep. Yep. Is there any truth to the rumor that Julia Roberts wants to be on the show? And the second <laughs> one is, Chris, are you still getting calls about your daughter not coming to school? Uh, is Julia coming? Uh, <laughs> good question. I, I just finished a movie with Julia um, called Eat, Pray, Love. It comes out in August. And when we were shooting it, uh, I brought the rough cuts and she saw them and fell in love with the show. And it was very fun when we, when we were at the Golden Globes and she's such a great lady. She came up and introduced herself to everyone. Um, so I don't know if Julie is going to do it. I mean, I know we got a movie to promote first, but uh, maybe. I mean, she loves what the show is about, and I'm very close with her. So, who have you had to say no to? Who's wanted to do the show? Um, there's a lot of American Idol contestants who call. <laughs> And Amber takes the call. Amber's like, hell to the now. I'm the stop it. No, there's already one on there. Sorry. Yeah, but I'm shocked at how many American Idol contestants do get a hold with you, people who've been, and not just this season. I'm talking for like four seasons back, five seasons back. And, you know, they're also wildly talented, and I am encouraging them to, you know, go on tape. Let's look at it. I don't say no. No, my daughter is going to school now, so I don't get those calls. <laughs> Standing up. Yeah. The girl behind <laughs> you with the bleak shirt. Yes. Hi. Hi. Um, we, uh, we were just wondering, we, we really love Kurt's dad. He's so awesome. Um, and, uh, and we really love Finn's mom. Mm -hmm. And we really love the tension that could be built if Finn's mom <laughs> and Kurt's dad <laughs> had a little love going on. So, if this is a question or a little nugget that I'm trying to plant in your head. <laughs> Future writers are in there? Um, actually, we've shot those episodes. <laughs> <laughs> um, Very smart. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that that's, that's uh, a great tension for uh, Chris and Corey to, uh, you know, we've, we've shot them. It's airing this spring where Kurt masterminds the parents getting together so he can move in with Finn. <laughs> I did ask you backstage, um, will the cheerleaders make out? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, yes. <laughs> Back there, blue sweatshirt, sweater. Yeah, yep. You touched on it lightly, but you haven't really. I, could you talk about how long it takes to put together one episode? Well, well that's what is so hard about the show, you know. Um, for example, when we're shooting episode four, we kind of have to have a broad idea of what we're doing in episode nine, which is probably two and a half months away. Um, so you have to get the songs cleared. And once, well, the process is once you get the songs cleared, which usually happens now, um, Adam Anders, our music producer, does a demo, which is then given to me, which is, you know, we talk, we tone the song, he does that. That usually takes two weeks. If it's approved and the cast comes in and records it, that usually takes a week. Then Zach, our choreographer, gets it. That usually takes a week. It then takes usually eight to 10 days to shoot the episode. So it, it's months and months and months of, of preparation. We don't come up with the song and shoot it on Friday. We, we are very far ahead from that. And that's, that's the great challenge of, of the show is having to, you know, because you're, you're doing a comedy, but you're also doing a musical. And to, to, to get everything up to snuff takes a long time. That, that said, we're, we're shooting a number on Tuesday that Kevin recorded this afternoon, right? Right on, Kevin. Mm. <laughs> I'm yeah. going to be late to this. And then on top of that, you have the concert tour. You have the White House. <laughs> How do you fit all of that? I mean, you don't say no to the president, obviously, but. Not one you <laughs> voted for, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I mean, it's all, we look at each other every day and we're like, how the hell did this happen? Seriously. <laughs> um, the White House is just an honor, you know, to have Michelle Obama 
call and, you know, the tour was just something that the tour happened because, you know, there was such a huge outpouring of, of fans wanting to see these kids. And we said no, and we said no, and we said no. And finally, we, the, the reaction was so extreme that we said yes, and we were only going to do three shows. That was it. Um, and then we put it on sale, and they all sold out. And then we added more dates, and then they sold out. And today we put an extra show in LA, and it sold out in 22 seconds. <laughs> really? So, wow. yeah. So, I mean, it's not something that we would do, you know, for the, an entire summer run, but it's a tribute to the fans, you know? And we all feel the same way. We've come up with a really great show. It's our greatest hits from the show. It's everybody, uh, the kids on that tour with special appearances by Matt and Jane in some capacity. Um, and we're gonna go out on the road and... Um, <laughs> I didn't see that, did she make a bad face? <laughs> uh, and so we don't know, we might add extra dates, I hope we do, um, it, because we do it for the fans and we want people to be able to come and see um, our talent. The guy who has the microphone. Hi. With the hope that the show will go on for a long, long time, what are the plans post high school graduation? Oh, we're just trying to get through the year, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I've pitched. Um, we, Brad and Ian and Dante and I know the, the first three years. We always keep saying it's like the Rocky movies. <laughs> um, you, you, you get beaten up, and then the next year you win, and the next year you go to St. Petersburg, Russia, and. and <laughs> <laughs> we won an international show choir competition eventually, but um, yeah, we, I mean, we have the paradigm, but we haven't thought past that. Yeah, actually, one of the questions I got on Twitter today was, when are you going to London to promote this show, especially Matthew Morrison? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be there in June. Great there you go. Me. There you go. Yep. Um, I've got a pretty loud voice um, because I'm a teacher. There you go. And I want Thank you for your work. Oh, thanks. But I wanted to know if there were any teachers who inspired you uh, Absolutely. in your role. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, my, one of my high school directors, his name is Ralph Opasek, who has uh, completely inspired me to stay in the arts. I had this crossroad where I was going to either be a soccer player or go into the arts, and uh, he really pushed for that. And, and the other one is this English teacher. His name is Phil Doran. And Yes, English. Um, and I actually, um, I, I, I have a, a wiener dog. It's a porcelain wiener dog that I took from his classroom and I actually put it into the choir room on set. So it's like a tribute to him. So if you ever see a porcelain Aww. wiener dog in the choir room, that's uh, my dedication of that teacher. Yeah. Yeah. I love the episode with Kristen Chenoweth. What was it like filming with her? And are you going to bring her back? Uh, yes, she comes back the third episode. Um, I love Kristen. I did a movie with Kristen. I think she's such a, you know, the great thing about the show is the way we cast the show. Um, it's like, if you have a Tony, you can get on the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think there's any other show on the air that has that rule. So, um, um, we wrote that role for Kristen. It was tailored to her. Um, is she a drunk? No, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> well, when I called her up and I said, Let, I want you to do Glee, it had not aired yet. She saw the pilot and she said, I don't want to be sweet. And I'm like, what if we make you a promiscuous pill-popping alcoholic? And she said, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I don't know, I'll let these guys speak about her. You know, she's such a pro and, and her, she's such a great character actress. And, you know, I give a lot of our musical success in many ways to Kristen because um, when we aired, we were doing really well and really well, and then that episode aired, which is an early one, and the music just took off. Mm -hmm. um, many of the songs that Kristen did with Matt and with Leah. I mean, Matt, you should talk about it, because you have all your scenes with her. Oh, I mean, uh, where do I start? She's such a pro, like you said, and she's such a sweet girl, and she's always just brings it, every mm -hmm. single take. Even when the camera's not on her, like there's some people, you know, kind of tune out or something, but she's just such a pro and so, so with it and quite an inspiration. I mean, when we shot um, Maybe This Time, mm -hmm. I do believe that, that uh, I think the tear that you saw Chris Colfer have was the real thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Chris, have you called her yet? Because did you get her number? 
Oh, no. no I, I, I feel weird about, about that now because I've, I've made it public that I got her phone number from Matthew. Um, <laughs> no, no, but she... I told you not to tell anyone. Oh, I, no, you, oh yeah, you did. I'm sorry. Um, but no, I, I, I've not texted her. <laughs> well, um, obviously, we would love this night to go on and on and on, but I've been told we've got to wrap it up. Um, thank you, everybody. Ooh. And, uh,